LP, linear programming from the beginning of the semester. And uh, we're looking at how to formulate LP problems. Uh, we just want to continue briefly on that and look at how to solve problems using two basic approaches. That's a graphical approach and uh, another method known as the simplest method. But first, let's, let's look at some applications of linear programming. Uh, linear programming can be applied in various forms. When we are blending, let's say we are uh, mixing feeds, and other thing, or even it can even be it can even be chemicals, right? We want to look at the optimum quantities that can be mixed when we are produ producing certain products in the planning. We can apply LP in oil refinery. LP is applied distribution, financial, and economic planning, and a whole lot of them. So let's quickly uh, look at another example on how to formulate a problem. This is a financial planning problem. Is that a bank gives four types of loans, right? Mortgage, we have first mortgage, second mortgage. It can give home improvement loans and personal overdraft. And, uh, and these loans yield the following interest. For first mortgage, if you go for first mortgage, the interest rate is 14%. If you go for second mortgage, the interest rate is 20%. And uh, for home improvement, the interest rate is 20%. And personal overdraft is 10%. Now, what the bank wants to achieve is to uh, actually maximize profit. And that, that, that's the, uh, what they stand for. So the bank has a minimum for CFL lending capability of 250 million pounds right so that means they cannot lend beyond that and uh, they are further constrained by the following policy so if, if we take if uh, we are supposed to give all these four loans they cannot go beyond 250 million so if you let x1 be first mortgage x2 second mortgage x3 home improvement x4 personal overdraft that's total loans that they can give shouldn't exceed 250 million and uh, they are constrained by these policies too that the first must give must be at least 55 percent of all the mortgages that's supposed to be Let, let's quickly go back and look at this now they are lending the probability shouldn't exceed so that's actually one of the constraints right that the sum of the total load. so if you let let's say x1 <coughs> to be first mortgage and let's say x2 to be second mortgage and x3 um, we have home improvements and x4 is for personal overdrafts Right, so in millions of euros, we are saying that x1 plus they are constrained by this that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 they don't want to go beyond 250 million, so to be less or equal to 250. That is in millions of euros, right? In millions of euros, they don't want to go beyond that, so you have to take note of that first. Then the other constraint now each loan has some basic interest rates first mortgage is 14 percent second mortgage 20 percent and that order so let's look at the other constraints the other constraint is that the first mortgage must be at least 55 percent of all the mortgages now let's bear in mind that we have only two mortgages first and second and the first mortgage must be at least, as me, at least means more equal to, right? So our first mortgage, X1, should be at least 55%, that is 0.55 of all the mortgages, that is X1 plus X2, right? So that is the first condition. And uh, the first mortgage must also be at least 25% of all the loans issues right in 
pounds times should be at least 25% of all the those. So x12 should be more or equal to 0.25 of all the loans. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. Right. So that, that is the other condition to that is attached. Then condition two that the second mortgage cannot exceed 25% of all loans issues. The second mortgage cannot exceed 25%. So cannot exceed means it can't go beyond 25%. So be less or equal to. So our X2, so this is the first one. Now our X2 should also be less or equal to 0 0.25 of X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4. So that is the second condition. And the third condition is to avoid public displeasure and duration of a new windfall tax. The average interest rate on all loans must not exceed 15% of all loans. Now let's bear in mind that all loans are given by X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus this. And uh, we are told that the average interest rate on all the loans must not exceed 15% of that. Now we know that the, the interest rates on the loans are for first mortgage is 14%. So we have 0 0.14 of first mortgage plus then interest on the second mortgage is 20%. So that's 0 0.20 of X1. Then on the home improvement is 0 0.20 of X3. And on personal overdraft, let, let's check that it shouldn't be uh, the personal overdraft interest rate is 10%. So this is 0 0.10 of X4. And we are told that the interest rate on all loans shouldn't exceed 15% of all the loans. So that means it should be less or equal to 0 0.15 of all loans. X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus X4. Right. So these are the conditions that have been given. We are told to formulate the problem and that's what we have been doing. And that we should tell them that they want to maximize profits. Are you okay? They want to maximize interest. So the interest function is given by 0 0.14. That is what we have here. So this should be maximized. And the constraints have been given. This is the first constraint. So there's the first constraint, and that produces them and in that order. So that's basically the condition. So we will, if we want to write it formally, uh, formally, we we'll have to write it. Maybe maximize 0 0.14x1, blah blah blah, subject to all these constraints. So that is this. Let, let's look quickly look at another example. There's a planning problem. Uh, formulating feed. Right? So we said that a manufacturer of animal feed produces feed mix for dairy cattle. And the feed mix contains two active ingredients to provide bulk. Now, one kilogram of feed mix. So we are producing just one kilogram of feed mix. And it must contain a minimum quantity of this. So Take note of the word minimum of this quantity. So we have four nutrients, and uh, each kilogram of fish should contain a minimum of these quantities in grams, right? So, and the ingredients have the following nutrient values. So, ingredient one, grams per kilogram, right? And we have ingredient two. So, for nutrient A, for nutrient A, you need, uh, for ingredient one, you need 100 grams of nutrient A and uh, 200 grams of uh, nutrient A for ingredient two, in that order. So what should be the amount of active ingredients in one kilogram of feed? So we need the ingredients. So we can let ingredient one be X1 and ingredient two be X2. Now, mind you, by all means, we want to, Minimize cost. 
Are you okay? So for individual one, the total cost will be 40, but know that we want to minimize cost. That will be the objective. So let's look at how to formulate this problem. So we want to minimize. So first, first let's x1 be ingredient 1. Right, in grams or kilograms, and oh, sorry, ingredient 1. Then x2, that for ingredient 2. Now I want to minimize cost. <coughs> and the cost function is given by 40 of x1 plus 60 of x2. Subject to now, let's look at the constraint. So, for ingredient one, nutrient A, 100 of x1 plus 200 of x2. Now, we are told that this should be in must contain a minimum quantity that we can be more equal to this. So, this will be more equal to 90. Are you okay? More equal to 90. That's for nutrient A. Then for B, we have 80 of X1 plus 150 of X2. This should also be more equal to 50. Then C, we have 40 of X1 plus... Is it 20? 20 yes, 20. Of X2 should be more equal to 20. And the last constraint is that 10 of x1. Now, there are no um, value for x2. Value for x2. So that is zero. And this should be more equal to 2. Right. More equal to 2. And uh, there is an added constraint. Now, we know that x1, that's the non negativity constraint. x1, x2 should be more equal to zero. And also, now we are producing. <coughs> The, the, the feet should, should just be one kilogram. That means when you add x1 to x2, it should be equal to one. Right, so we take note of that. So all these are uh, the constraints how the model will be formulated.